putting out my suit, getting ready to come here, and my wife says, yeah, well, what's happening today? I said, oh, I'm going to the, the TyCon event, and uh, we're going to spend part of the afternoon with Salman Khan. And she dropped to the <laughs> Raced to the closet. What am I going to wear? <laughs> You're coming with me? I said, no, the real Salman Khan. Who will have want... more of an impact, I think, than the other one, right? You know, if, you, if, you want, if you want to really... <laughs> If you want a, if you want a really surreal story, uh, so apparently uh, Bill Gates did a search for Salman Khan, <laughs> and, and he forwarded his entire organization, the other guy, saying, "Did you know there's another Salman Khan?" And just the idea of seeing Bill Gates look at Salman Khan without his shirt on it was a very dissonant. I, I, anyway. Not, uh, not about him, but yeah, yeah. Well, I think uh, like so many people, like everyone here in the audience, I too, just backstage, just captivated about your story. And this isn't the first time that, that I've heard about your story. I've been following you for a while now. Um, so, so what happens now? You, you, here we are, we have a lot of entrepreneurs, we have a lot of venture capitalists, and uh, one of the big questions is, okay, this is great, it, it's, it seems very successful, but it's not for profit. So, so at what point... What is it for then? <laughs> At what point do you turn the corner if that if that point is even on your radar? Yeah, no, we're definitely not going to turn the, you know, this isn't like a bait and switch. We're not going to, uh, you know, be not for profit at some point, you know. I, I think I would have to do something pretty shady at this point to, to actually turn it into a, a for profit. Um, no, so, so, you know, the, the simple answer is no, we're going to stay not for profit. The, the decision early on was, and, and I think a lot of y'all can, and, and I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with for profit. I obviously worked in a very for profit industry before this. Uh, <laughs> It was pretty much that's all it was for. Um, <laughs> that's that's the next session at two o'clock. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Stock tips from uh, the, no, but but you know, early on, even in, in, it was in two thousand eight, actually, some some VCs had approached me, and and it was it was it was actually pretty exciting conversation number one because they said, hey, you know, this is awesome. We can fund this. You'll be able to get a salary. You can keep doing these videos full time. You don't have to find all the spare time to do it. And uh, you know we can we can do you know it'll be a double bottom line business or we can a social venture whatever you want to call it and uh, and you know if it works out you'll be rich and that didn't sound bad to me uh, so so uh, we we scheduled another meeting <laughs> and, and uh, uh, but but it was obvious by meeting two that it, there was just something that wasn't. And I'm not saying this is, there's anything wrong with this, but I, I was just enjoying this so much. I mean, it was really kind of like why I woke up in the morning. And uh, by meeting two, the conversation started to become like, well, you know, you should continue doing this, but we should focus more on test prep, and maybe we could charge for this, or have a subscription model, or, or, or freemium, or whatever you want to call it. And, I, I, you know, I'm not saying that they were wrong or bad, or, but I just started, it didn't feel as fun all of a sudden. And I, so I was just like, you know, hold on, yeah, maybe we'll just wait on this, see, see where it goes. And then you fast forward a little bit more all the way to 2009, and, and I talked to a few other uh, VCs, and, and I just went through kind of an introspective process. Because, you know, like I said in the talk, one of the really fun things about this was the idea that, um, that, that people were saying thank you, that, that people were, uh, that my great grandkids could use this, that people, kids all over the world could use this really for all of time, that even if I got hit by a bus, these things could keep teaching. And uh, so, so I, I went through the thought experiment of, well, what's a home run in either situation? A home run in the for-profit world, which isn't a bad thing. I mean, it's by no means certain, is, wow, you know, you become this major player. You IPO, or you get acquired, or, and, and I think that, you know, I would feel pretty good about that. I would have created a big business. Uh, that, I'm sure that would have reached many people. I would have become rich, which wouldn't have been bad. Uh, but, but then when you think about the, the home run of the not-for-profit side, it, it was even a little more exciting. Is that it, there's kind of this opportunity here, maybe, to uh, start an institution, to start something that could last maybe hundreds of years. I mean, this, this is what I told my wife, is that, you know, there are no for-profit entities that, that last more than, you know, very few last more than a century. But there are not-profit entities that do. And, you know, not, not to put Khan Academy in the same league as these organizations, but, you know, would I rather start a GE or would I rather start a Stanford? And, and when I thought about it that way, I was like, you know, it would kind of be more exciting to, to start the ladder. So, so that's, that's the not-profit not idea. And, and it's interesting, your background. It's interesting you bring up Stanford, uh, even your own CV, uh, MIT, and then to Harvard. You are talking about real traditional institutions here. And what you're doing, in many ways, can be viewed as very untraditional, how you're educating people. Is there a negative side of this? Have you gotten some pushback, whether it's from the traditional education community or, or anyone else in the community? Uh, you know, right now, and luckily, and I, I expected a lot more pushback, especially when we, we go into schools and all, but, uh, well, the fun thing is, 
the, the core thing what we're doing, we kind of, we're going straight to the student, or straight to the parents, so we don't have to get buy-in from a lot. But even in the schools, we're, we're dealing with the schools that, that have wanted to do it. We're not forcing anybody to do anything. And I, I think the only resistance we get is sometimes when people see, you know, just kind of on the surface, and they say, oh wait, lectures on video, they're going into classrooms, wait, this is here to replace teachers, or this is somehow going to, you know, mechanize the classroom. But I think when people, what we're saying is oh, it's the exact opposite. These videos and the software, they're actually about to kind of rehumanize the classroom. Instead of having a teacher up here giving a lecture and students down there uh, passively listening, we're, we're offloading all that with the technology and now class time becomes interactive. We can tutor each other, the teacher's gonna walk by, every moment of their time is gonna be mentoring each other. There's data, there's analytics, so that any intervention that the teacher does is, is very productive. So the teachers who've experienced it, They've told us this is why they became teachers in the first place. So, uh, yeah, I think the only resistance is, is just the, the, the knee-jerk reaction. But when they actually see what we're doing, we're actually all about empowering teachers. Do you think there would, will be some resistance, even more so, as Khan Academy gets more well-known? Right now it's well-known, yes. but it's going to get to that next level where people, especially now, the economic climate in this country, yeah. where there's so many budget cuts, there's so much bad blood going back yeah. and forth. Do you expect some resistance? Because I'm sure there will be at some point around the corner. Yeah, you know, and, and that, we have to be careful there because obviously education is a very politically charged uh, thing and we're trying our best to, to stay out of the, the arguments. We think regardless of what, where everything else settles, we'll, we'll, we can be relevant. Um, but, you know, I, I, I don't want to, I hope, maybe it will develop. Um, I, I'm not, you know, but uh, we haven't seen it in a strong way just yet. Okay. Uh, in terms of the subject matter now, you're doing all these videos yeah. by yourself. Yeah. Uh, I'm a TV guy. Uh, I get a sore throat by talking a lot. So, so, so when you plan on expanding, are you just going to start bringing in other experts in various subjects? So, so you know, based on what our focus is in, in, the, in the short term, we don't view that as a gating factor. I, you know, I, I keep making videos. This is fun for me because I get to, there's some stuff I know and there's some stuff I get to learn and I get to keep teaching it and all the rest. And, you know, even just one guy can do K through calculus plus chemistry, biology, and physics on the, on the course of about three man years. So it is this very scalable thing, but with that said, we are starting to look for other potential lecturers. And I'll even say this audience, we're actually, we're translating into 10 languages, Hindi, uh, Bengali, we're already, we've already uh, started on, um, and, and we want to do other languages. And so there's, there's an option you want to help redo the videos in those languages, or even teach in those languages. You know, one thing that we're missing is basic literacy videos, but in like the context of, of the, the developing world, that's super important. So uh, yeah, we are looking to bring other people in the fold. The one thing we're not looking to do is, we don't want to be this crowdsourced hundreds, thousands of teachers, where, you know, the, the student watches one video from one teacher and then another video from another teacher and it's a different quality because that's a very, first of all, that already exists. I mean, YouTube is that to some degree. There's other sites that do that. And we think that our niche is really a, a bond with, with the teacher. I mean, it's, it's crazy because it's technology, but we think we can actually form a bond with the students. And so people, once they watch a, a 10, 20, 30 videos from the same teacher, they're willing to invest their time and their emotional energy into it. You can obviously sell and teach this product amazingly because it's your product and you have a dynamic personality and obviously very intelligent. How do you bring the next person in there to do the tutorial? Well, yeah, I mean, it's an open question. We're uh, we're kind of doing. Uh, there, there's a guy who well, like American Idol casting. We're thinking or? about that. Yeah, like teaching <laughs> Idol. We, we yeah, that's the way. To, there, there's a couple of people who have. Uh, there's there's a, some guys who are, are video log bloggers who, who are pretty hilarious and intellectual and stuff, and they, they want to try it out. So we'll see how, how they do. And there's a guy from MIT who's in computer science. He's been teaching computer science. Uh, I, I think he's got a lot of potential. But we're not we're not in a rush to find these teachers. We want to take our time and find people who really resonate with students.